One day, when Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and from Jerusalem, were sitting there. So get the picture. Jesus is teaching. This is the Son of God. He taught like no one had ever taught. He did miracles. Gave sight to the blind. The deaf could hear. He, won he raised the dead. So, so understand, when Jesus was teaching, it was awesome. And everyone said, Jesus is in town. you got to come. you got to come. People are bringing their friends. you got to come. I'm going. And they're there. They fill up the house. All the villages around, they fill up the place where Jesus is teaching. Now look what it says. The power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. The power of God. You ever meet a poser? You know what a poser is? I'm learning the lingo of the street. A poser is someone who just hasn't got it. They pretend they've got it, but they don't have it. They, they act like they're one thing, but they don't have the stuff to back it up. They, they, they have a, a, a false mask, a, a, a presentation that they're somebody, and, and when you get right behind the scene, you see they really don't have the goods to back that up. Oh, they pretend, but not really. You ever, you ever see a poser? You ever meet a poser? I want to confess about a time when I was a poser. Want to hear my poser story? I was horrible. I was so bad. So I'm in high school, and uh, of course, you know, I loved, I loved sports. I loved athletics, and I was on all kinds of teams and whatever. I was never any good at anything, but I just had so much fun. And uh, I played football. And the football coach told all the football team, he said, you have to, you have to run track. you got to stay in shape. You can't just play football and think you're going to be on the team. You got well, he was also the track coach. So he made all the football players run track. I said, I don't want to run track. What do I, I don't want to run track. I don't even know about track. What, did, what would I do? He said, well, you got to pick. There's lots of events. You pick an event, but you're going to run. Be, you're going to be in track. I said, what would I even do? I don't know what to do. Well, give me, like, give me some idea. He said, well, you could run the hurdles. I said, well, tell me about that. He said, we shoot a gun, you run as fast as you can, and we put obstacles in your path to try to knock you down before you get to the end. I said, well, that doesn't sound like anything I want to do. What else could I do? He said, well, you could run long distance. I said, wait a minute, isn't that where you run till you throw up? Why, I, why would I want to run long distance? I'm not a track runner. I don't want to run long distance in track. What, what other events are there? He said, well, you could do the pole vault. Pole vault? I said, what? tell me about pole vault. He said, well... We give you a 17-foot-long, whippy, limp, fiberglass pole. And you run, you run as fast as you can, and you hold it like a lance out in front of you. You run down a little track. Hold it up, and you run, 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 and there's a little box at the end of the track, and you're running as fast as you can go. And, you, and as you're running, and that pole's wobbling like that, you try to stick the end of that pole in that little box, and then when you, and you run right up to the edge of it. And the pole just bends. I said, what? You mean I'm standing right next to the other end of the pole and I got this end of the pole in my hand? He said, yeah. I said, well, what happens? He said, the pole will just shoot you up and then shoot you up in the air. Throw you up over the bar. If you're lucky, you'll land on the mat. If you're not lucky, the pole will break while you're halfway up. Ah, you'll be dead. <laughs> I said, I don't want a pole vault. Do I don't, why would I want a pole vault? That doesn't sound good to me. What else is there? He said, you could put the shot. I said, what's that? He said, see this iron ball? Take this, throw it as far as you can. Now, I'm, I'm waiting for the bad news, like, then you run and catch it or something like that. Because <laughs> everything else in track is horrible. <laughs> so he said, you just take this ball, throw it as far as you can. I wait. There's, I said, that's it? He said, yeah, that's it. I said, I'm a shot putter. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Man, I'm your shot putter. And so I was a shot putter in high school. I was on the track team. And this is back in the day when coaches were tough. I mean, the football coach was the track coach, and they were tough. How many of you remember the day when coaches could hit you with their whistle strap? Raise your hand. You children today got it a whole new, I'm telling you, soft babies. <laughs> Run, beast, and whoosh, ah! <laughs> It was a different day back then. We didn't have baby seats or airbags or anything. <laughs> Mama just throw her arm across and stop you. <laughs> Different day back in the day. Ride a bike, shoot. We didn't wear shoes, knee pads, helmets, nothing. Crashing into stuff, get up. Different day. I don't recommend any of that. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So the track coach finds this guy in school named Lenny. Big as an ox, strong as an ox. Said, Lenny, I want you to throw the shot. I'm standing there when the coach asked him. I'm thinking, what about I'm the shot putter? Well, I looked at Lenny and realized, no, I think Lenny may be the shot putter. I don't know. And I never won one meet. Not one. Never. Not one. I got second every time. Lenny got first. I got second. I always beat the guys from the other school, but I could never beat Lenny. Never, never. Lenny toyed with me like a cat with a mouth. Just laughed. I'd throw, and he always threw after me. No matter what I threw, Lenny would look at what I threw. If I threw 50, he'd throw 51. If I threw 53, he'd throw 54. If I threw 54, he'd throw 55. Didn't matter, it didn't matter. Made me so mad. I'd throw, oh, and you know how shot putters are. Have you seen the shot put? Take this little steel ball, you grind it into your neck, you know, and you jump and you spin in circles and you throw it around. Whoa, ah, you throw the thing. And they always yell. I never figured out why. They always yell. Ah, they yell. So I did too. I, I never knew why, but I thought that's what shot. Ah, yeah, maybe it's like the push the ball through the air. I'd throw, and when the ball hit, boom, hit the ground, Lenny would look, and he'd go, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and he'd go get the shot, and he'd throw just a little further than me. All his ribbons, all his ribbons, first place ribbons, all my ribbons, second place ribbons. I was sick of it. I was fed up. I know you can't imagine me being sick of it and fed up, but I was sick of it and fed up. I'm a senior in high school, and I thought, I am, I am not going to lose every single meet. I am not going to. I'm going to win. Now, I discovered that a softball is the exact same size as a shot. And if you take black electrician's tape and you run it all around that softball, <laughs> it looks just like a shot. It's all black and shiny. Looks like a steel shot. And so I took a softball, which weighs what? Nothing. And I, and I wrapped it up in black electrician's tape and I put it in the shot bag. Because the relays were coming up. 14 high schools at the final meet of the year at our school. Night, meet, under the lights. I said, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win tonight. Put the, put the softball in the shot bag. Told the coach at the beginning of that meet. I went down to the other end of the field. I said, coach, would you watch me tonight? Would you watch me throw? He said, Beeson, I never watch you throw. Why would I watch you throw? I always watch Lenny throw. <laughs> I know, but would you watch me tonight? Why would I? Well, because I really feel like I'm going to throw one a long way tonight. Well, maybe. We'll see. So it came time towards the end of the meet for me to throw. And I looked and I saw the coach coming across the field towards the shot put area. I reached into the shot bag and I got my softball, all taped up with black electrician's tape. So it looked, it looked like a shot. I pulled it out real quickly under the cover of darkness because evil loves darkness. I pulled it out under the cover of darkness. I put it up against my neck real quick, and I stood in the ring. And you know, you do all those. I started screaming just, I just when I was picking it up. Ah! <laughs> I'm spinning around. <laughs> Woo! I threw that. And it went. It went over the shot put area, <laughs> over the fence, <laughs> over the road, out of the lights, into the woods into the woods and for 20 seconds everyone they saw it with their own eyes and they believed they believed <laughs> and it was in the air so long they'd look at it and then look at me and then look at it and look at me <laughs> it was awesome I was a poser and for 20 seconds they all believed and the rest of the story is way too painful to even talk about. <laughs> Children, do not try that at home. See, uh, it looked like I had power. There was one appearance, and for a short time, it really looked like that was the truth. But only a few moments later, everyone realized. Jesus is no poser. He is the Son of God. He is the risen Christ. He is the soon and coming King. He is the Alpha and Omega, the one who defeated death and hell and the grave. He is the Son of God in the flesh with us. And He has the power to do whatever He purposes to do. 
and he will do it, and it will be accomplished. And his promises you can rely on because he has the power to keep his promises to all of us and to the world.